welcome to Youth League Baseball on RTC TV. Tonight's matchup is against the Mariners versus the Mets. That was the first pitch thrown by number five, Drew Bowers Ball for man, the Mets. Swing, uh. Up to bat for the green team Mariners is number four, Carson Pollock. Carson Pollock fouls that one off. Starts off with an early strike. Good job as a leadoff batter. Don't want to watch too many pitches. Need to get a feel for the pitcher for the rest of your team. Another foul there by Carson. High pitch. Good weather out here, right, Abby? Very good weather. Earlier it was a little bit humid, but as the night's gone on, it's cooled off a little bit, so it's a really good night for baseball. Probably have to turn the lights on since it is getting later in the afternoon, but playing under the lights is always fun. I think the count's two and two now on Carson Pollock. Probably have to get some ice cream too, right? I really want some ice cream, yes. <laughs> Actually, I saw some kids with slushies earlier, so. Yeah, that, that sounds pretty good That too. may be plan B. Yeah, good great, contact there. Great catch by number two. Brady Morgan, that's out number one for the Mets. Good D there by the Mets. I thought it was going to fall through right behind second base, yeah. but it ended up floating a little bit longer. Headed straight for that gap. Good swing, but a miss by batter number two, J.R. McLaughlin. Drew Bowers doing a good job on the mound so far for the Mets. Good eye. One out. Second batter, also number two for the Mariners, up to bat. Mets looking to get their second out for the inning. And there it is. Strike two on J.R. McLaughlin. Fly ball will drop in left field. And they'll hold J.R. McLaughlin on first base. Right. Good hit there by McLaughlin. So the Mariners have their first base runner and only one out. Nice cut there by... Uh, Number seven, Bryce Bacher. Good pitch, J.R. McLaughlin tries to steal and will be called out. Good read by Brady Morgan to beat him to the base. That was, all. Oh, did you see that? that I was did, I did. Good sportsmanship. <laughs> That's the best thing we want to see out here. Good swing, but that's three outs for the Mets. They will head into the dugout and Mariners will take the field. This has been one half inning for the Youth League Baseball game. We'll be back. Welcome back to Youth League Baseball on RTC TV. This is the bottom half of the first inning. The Mariners are in the field and quick timeout as center fielder needs to tie his shoelaces. Seems like he's good to go. In the circle for the Mariners is Enrique Navarro and up to bat for the Mets is Brady Morgan. On deck is Brady Minix, and in the hole is Drew Bowers. Good eye by Brady Morgan as he watched the second pitch go by. 
Counts one and one. For the minor league, the umpire's not behind the plate as you would normally see. He actually stands behind the pitcher's mound so he can be the field umpire as well as the plate umpire. Good swing by Brady Morgan. Counts one and two. And first out of the game, Brady Morgan strikes out, one out for the Mariners. Good way to start the game there by uh, Enrique yes. on the mound. Did it in quite a, not very many pitches, so good job by Enrique. And he gets ahead early again. Good pitch, got the Mets swinging early. This is Brady Minix, number 12, up to bat for the Mets. And strike number two. Be interesting so, to see here if Enrique goes with a third strike in a row or if he wastes the pitch. Yep, Minix will need to protect the plate here on this with 0-2 count. Mm -hmm. And it looks like he's gonna take a hit on a dead ball here and gets first base. Yep, so that puts Brady Minix on first base. That's hard for a pitcher when you are up 0-2 to lose your batter on a hit by pitch, but it does happen. So one out, runner on first base, and Drew Bowers, the pitcher for the Mets, up to bat. He's the first lefty we've seen all game. And Minix takes second on the pass ball. Gives Drew here a chance to get an RBI on, the, on this offensive at bat. Yeah, that would be big for the Mets to get up already. And he makes contact, but it goes foul towards the third baseline. Counts one and one with one out, runner on second base for the Mets. Andrew Bowers makes contact and third baseman doesn't know what to do with the throw there. He fumbles it a little bit, so Drew will get to first base. Helpful that he's on the left side of the plate, so he's a couple steps closer. Like you said, hard hit, kept Minix at second base, but allowed Bowers to get to first base. So now you've got runners on first and second for the Mets, only one out. And double steal on the pass ball. That puts runners on second and third for the Mets. Two big RBIs here for the batter, number 10, Haynes. Good position to be in to have your cleanup hitter up at the plate right now. Absolutely. There is one out, but in this situation, a big hit doesn't matter. And Minix thought about stealing home, but the fat pass ball came back from the screen too fast, and I think it was smart to stay at third. Good eye by the batter, Haynes. Good job by the number four batter being selective on his pitches. This is a big at bat, having two runners in scoring position. Good swing. Full count for the batter. Big pitch coming up here with full count. Two runners in scoring position. Number 10, Haynes, up to bat. Yeah. 
And swing and a miss at a high pitch. That's a big out for the Mariners. Great job by Enrique there, keeping his composure on that pitch. It could have gone two different directions and it ended up going in his favor. Yep, absolutely. And once again, there's a pass ball, but bounced off the screen too quickly and Haynes at third base, excuse me, Minix at third base could not score. Can't imagine a lot of st stealing home on this field. That backstop's pretty short, so. Unless it bounces off into an odd direction, I would agree with you. Yeah, it looks like they're gonna go for the steal on home here, and Minix is able to get that point for his team. Good slide into home, and like we just talked about, it bounced off farthest away from the catcher, and Minix took advantage of his speed. So now, Drew Bowers is on third base. Must have really jinxed that one for the Mariners. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I tend to do that sometimes. Probably make some people mad. <laughs> Good stop there by the catcher. Yep, I was just going to say, the past few pitches, Enrique's struggled a little bit, but the catcher did a good job on that, stopping that ball. Number three, Duncan up to bat for the Mets. See if he can get Drew Bowers in from third base. Really good swing, but foul. As a pitcher, those foul balls are a little bit scary when they're hit so hard. They straighten those out. That's another RBI for the Mets. That's ball four for Duncan. The third base coach is waving him on to second base, but too late, trying to push him into scoring position on the walk. Yeah, and I'm sure we will see him steal second on this play here to try and bait that throw. I would imagine so. Number eight, Brooks, is up to bat for the Mets. Two outs. Good hold there. He wanted that high pitch. Enrique's got a few batters this game on his high pitch, but Brooks did a good job holding back. Another good eye by the batter. I think uh, Coach Bowers over there is really one his runner on first to steal. I think there may need to be a couple uh, <laughs> a couple times to go over signs here because I, I can see him from over here that he wants to steal. Yeah, it looks like there he goes on that one. And Drew Bowers hesitates at third base, but probably could have made it if he wouldn't have hesitated on that pass ball. But like we said, sometimes those are tricky because when they're bouncing all over the place, it could go in the hands of the runner or end up getting them tagged out. Yeah. So now we have number three, Duncan, and number five, Bowers, on base for the Mets with Brooks up to bat. Counts 2-0, and oh, two outs. And that's another walk for the Mets. Back-to-back -back walks, actually. So we have bases loaded. Number seven, Wilson, up to bat for the Mets. There's two outs. Just as easily as they got into this jam, one simple pop flyer strikeout can get the Mariners out. Yep, and we got to force out of any base here, so whatever base they want to go to. Exactly. And like you said, a game of inches. If there's a hit in the gap, it could be ugly for the Mariners, but yep. one pop fly can also get him out of the inning. Number seven, Wilson, up to bat for the Mets. Andrew, ooh. Uh-oh. I really thought he was gonna take that one. Oh, we it's got- It's gonna oh. be close, yep. Yeah. There's a- Prime example of why base running is so important in this game. That gets tricky. Drew Bowers went home, decided it was going to be too close, and by the time it got communicated back to the runner on first, it was too late. So that's the end of the first inning. We will talk to you when we get back to the second. Right. And we're back with Youth League Baseball on RTC TV. Top of the second inning, Enrique Navarro is up to bat for the Mariners, and Drew Bowers still on the mound for the Mets. The Mets scored one run this past inning and actually ran themselves out of the inning with some base running confusion towards the end. So we'll see what the Mariners can do up to bat 
as Enrique swings and misses on the second pitch. And ground ball to the third baseman, but Bowers picks it up, and great play by the pitcher. I would say that was a soft ground ball that he knew would be tough for his third baseman, and he wanted that out. Good play there by the Mets. They had some pretty solid defense in the uh, first inning as well. Brady Morgan running up the middle to grab a pop fly, and made a tag out to save them at second base. So up to bat for the Mariners is Tristan Reagan, number six. And called strike for Drew Bowers, the pitcher. The count is one and one, excuse me, one and two. And swing and a miss makes it the second out as Tristan heads back to the dugout, bringing number five, Garrett Armstrong, to the plate for the Mariners. Good job there by Drew. Two outs in this inning already for the Mets. And he's able to get ahead on this third batter. And ground ball to Brady Morgan at second base. Quick out and quick inning for the Mets as they head back to the dugout, grab their helmets. We will head to the bottom of the second. We'll be back. <laughs> and we're back with Youth League Baseball on RTC TV. This is the bottom of the second inning. Enrique Navarro still on the mound for the Mariners. And Caleb Wilson up to bat for the Mets. The Mets are ahead by one run. Last inning, they had bases loaded but ran themselves out of the inning, so we will see if they can get another rally going or if Enrique Navarro will shut them out. Wilson was up to bat this past inning, but with the base running error, he got to return to the plate at the top, excuse me, bottom of the second. And he will get a reset on balls and strikes for this new at bat. Yes, as a pitcher, that's not a fun rule, but as a batter, I really appreciate that oh, rule. Yeah. And swing and a miss for Wilson, but he has one more attempt as the count is two and two. Good out there. Brings the count to full for the first batter of the inning. Navarro really wanting a strike here and Wilson potentially looking for a walk. And Wilson wins the battle as he heads to first base and brings number 11 Lawson to the plate for the Mets. It's a good at bat there by Wilson. Getting as many pitches out of that yep. pitcher as he can get. You like to see foul balls, working the count, swinging at strikes, and letting the balls go by. And Lawson takes a big hack at that first pitch. Navarro doing a nice job of keeping his calm throughout this game so far, having a couple jams, but still getting the outs for the Mariners. And Wilson will take second base on the pass ball. Number 11, Lawson at the plate, looking for an RBI now as Wilson moves to second base. And there's a wild pitch that's gonna send Wilson to third. And he may steal home now. Oh, great job by that, that left fielder. Great backup. Backing up the throw. 
I would not have expected to see that in this league, but that, that impresses me. That was impressive. It's one of those things where if you're an outfielder, you back up 100 times, and it's that one time that you back up that it makes a difference. Yep. And no strikes on the batter. Excuse me, one strike on the batter for Lawson. That brings the count to three and one. Caleb Wilson on third base for the Mets. He got there from a hit by pitch. Strike number two. And ball four as number 11 Lawson walks to first base and and they're sending him to second. Round second base. Their play worked. A very smart play. Last inning, they tried to get that going, but there was some miscommunication between the coaches. But now they have an easy two RBIs with a hit if number 13, Kimball, who is up to back, can get a good bat on the ball. And there are still no outs. Is that correct? Andy? There are still no outs. This is the third batter of the inning. So good position here for the Mets to get get at least a couple runs in. Absolutely. Even just a ground ball somewhere will definitely get one RBI. And like we've talked about, that backstop all game has been a mystery. Yep. Third base, the runner on third base has to be good, do a good job listening to his coach and also reading the pitch and how it bounces off that backstop. Kimball up to bat, counts even at one. And watches a strike go by. Sometimes in this position it's tough. You don't want to swing at a bad pitch, but you definitely don't want strikes to go by because you do have the ability to score at least one, maybe two runners with a hit. And pass ball Looks bounces like away from the catcher. And that brings Wilson across home plate. Two runs now for the Mets. Kimball still up to bat. And Lawson, not knowing if Wilson was going to go home or not, decided to stay on second base so he didn't run his teammate off the bag. Lawson deciding he couldn't make it, stays on second base. Smart base running. I think there's a different method between aggressiveness and also being smart. And that is a the third walk of the inning as number 13, Kimball, heads to first base. And this brings number six, Lau, up to bat. So Lawson on second, Kimball on first, and Lau up to bat. Scores two to zero in the bottom of the second inning. Lots of pitches here for Enrique. Maybe getting tired. Yep, letting, needs to let his defense do a little work. And the Mets hold on the bobbled ball by the catcher. Still an opportunity for the Mets to get a run or two here with no outs and two runners on. Lau up to bat. Big swing, but a miss. And that'll be the first out of the inning. Lau strikes out and brings number four, Rayburn, up to bat. AJ Lau watches the first pitch go by for a ball. Still only one out and two runners on base for the Mets. Mariners looking to get their second out. And double steal here on the pass ball. As Kimball ends up on second, Lawson ends up on third base. So 
one good poke here from A.J. Lau up to bat could double the lead for the Mets. Scores 2-0 to zero in the bottom of the second currently. And no action on the pass ball there. High pitch for a ball. And I think that's a walk there. So. Yep, umpire trying to signal to Lau that that is four. You can head to your base. And I believe Mariners will take a timeout here. And it pitch, looks like a pitching change. Yep, and they are bringing in number three, Duncan, to pitch. And Enrique Navarro will switch him positions at first base while they take a break to warm up. So will we. And we're back after the pitching change for the Mariners. Lane Shank is now on the mound, pitching to number nine for the Mets, Young. Mets have the bases loaded. The score is two to zero in favor of the Mets, and there is only one out at the bottom of the second. And big swing, pass ball, but no movement for the Mets. So Lane Shank doing a good job, just trying to come in and throw strikes. A few walks this past inning led to one run scored, but as far as the base is loaded, the Mariners can still get out of this jam. And strike two on number nine, Young. Looking to put the ball in play here. It's a good job here by um, Mariners pitcher number five, number three. Coming yep. in and throwing strikes. Yep, that's what they needed him to do. And pop fly foul. Good job just making contact and protecting the plate with two strikes by the batter Young. So Lawson, Kimball, and Rayburn on the bases for the Mets. Young up to bat, looking to drive in a run. And a good cut there by Young, but he is struck out. But big out for the Mariners, as they have now two outs with the bases loaded. Makes you feel a little bit better when you can just touch any base and get out of the inning. So the two outs for that inning were strikeouts, so good job by Mariners pitchers. And this brings Brady Morgan to the plate where he hits a duck snort on the infield. No one's there to cover. Mm. And he will drive in a run. So good attempt and play by the first baseman. Just a lot of runners on base. And Shank didn't get over in time to receive the flip from Navarro at first base. So that brings the score three to zero. You know, sometimes those funny little hits that don't go very far cause more of a ruckus than even a line drive shot to the fence. So yep. good job by putting the ball in play by Morgan. And it's nice to see these kids thinking about these plays at this age too. Absolutely. I know they didn't execute it perfectly, but at least they have that play in mind yep. and they can work on it. They knew where they were supposed to be going, it just the execution didn't happen at that time. Yep. So this is the minor league Mariners and minor league Mets. These are nine and 10 year olds for youth league baseball. And this is number 12, Brady Minix up to the plate. He's the second batter. Mets have already batted through and are starting their second time around. So luckily for the Mariners, the Mets have not seen this pitcher as they made a pitching change with Lane Shank. So Minix here will try and drive a run in, maybe two as the bases are loaded for the Mets. And swing and a miss, good hack. I like to see the aggressiveness. He knows he's got a lot of, a lot riding on his at bat here, so you might as well take a great swing. And Tomahawk to the third baseman, knowing there's a force out at home. That's the third out of the inning. Good play by third baseman for the Mariners. They will head to the dugout and grab their bats. 
We will head to the top of the third inning right after this. And we're back for Youth League Baseball, top of the third inning. Mariners are up to bat. Number nine, Aiden Harrington, is the first batter for the Mariners. The orange team is the Mets. Drew Bowers, been pitching the whole game so far, is still on the mound. Score is three to zero. Mariners, excuse me, Mets getting two runs this past inning. And through two and one is the count here to number nine, Harrington. On deck is his twin brother, Braden Harrington. And good hard hit, ground ball to the first baseman, but he beats him there for the first out. Bringing Braden Harrington to the plate. And a good play there by number three for the Mets. Scooping that up and getting over there. That's <coughs> Duncan for the Mets making that play. And a long foul ball for Braden Harrington. Haven't seen much aggressiveness on the first pitch by many of these batters. So good job to get on the first pitch by Braden Harrington. Top of the third inning, scores three to zero in favor of the Mets. High pitch again, counts two and one to the batter, Braden Harrington. Good eye by Braden there. Thought it could have been a strike, yeah, but. Yeah, it could have gone both ways. Called ball low. Drew Bowers behind in the count for one of the first times tonight, three and one. And first walk we've seen by Drew Bowers as Braden Harrington takes his base. Christian Kimberling comes to the plate for the Mariners. He's wearing number 12. Runner on first base, hoping to get his teammate to second. And good swing by Christian Kimberling, just a little bit foul. But as a pitcher, that's a scary line drive when you've got a runner on base. Yep. And uh, this batter will need to protect the plate here with an 0-2 count. Good job by Bowers wasting a pitch, wanting to see if maybe he'll chase after it, but he's got Good control here with a one and two count. It's, it's a good thing about being up in the count is you can uh, experiment, throw some pitches that might get the batter to chase. Right. On the wild pitch, Braden Harrington takes second base for the Mariners. <coughs> now Christian Kimberling has a chance to bring in an RBI. Mariners have not scored yet this game, so big at bat. Only one out for the Mariners. And called strike on the batter. Strike three on the batter. That brings Lane Shank up to bat. He came in to relieve pitching this last inning. Did a really good job throwing strikes. So two outs and Christian Kimberling, excuse me, Braden Harrington on second base. Lane Shank up to bat for the Mariners looking to score their first run. And good hard ground ball to the first baseman. He gets there just in time. 
two good plays by the Mets' first baseman this game to save them this inning. Mets head to the dugout to grab their bats. We are heading to the bottom of the third. We'll be back. Welcome back to Youth League Baseball. Mariners versus Mets. Drew Bowers up to bat, just ground to shortstop and barely gets out by a step. The speedy lefty, good hit, just not enough. And the Mariners have their first, first pitch out of the game so far. Lane Shank coming in last inning to pitch, has done a really good job so far. For the Mets, this brings number 10, Haynes, up to bat. Score is still three to zero in the bottom of the third inning. We've turned on the lights out here. It's getting that time of night. Although it's summer, it is getting a little bit darker. So we will see how the game goes. Counts one and one for the batter, Haynes. And Shank still on the mound for the Mariners. Shank's first start of the inning, he did come in last inning. Did a great job throwing strikes to get them out of a hole. Yep, sometimes it's hard to come in, bases loaded, and be a reliever, but strikes is all you need, and that's what he did. <laughs> and ball low and out, says the umpire. That brings the count even at two. Number 10, <clears throat> Haynes up to bat, had a strikeout during his first at bat. See if he can change things up. And strike three, second out for the Mariners. One of the quickest innings they've had so far. Brings up the number five batter, number three, Duncan. And Duncan makes contacts toward towards the third baseline and they aren't able to make that play in time. Little overthrow and he's able to make it to second base. And good backup by the shortstop to not let the overthrow from right field allow Duncan to head to third base. So his double on the air brings number eight Brooks up to bat. He walked his previous at bat. And ground ball to third base, looks back the runner. A long throw, but good stop by Carson Pollock. Although Duncan trying to make it home, decides to head back, but Brooks steals second base while they try and keep Duncan on third base. So good, smart base running by yep. the Mets there, Very but good. also a good job by the Mariners to know which runner is important. And no, you don't want the runner on second base, but you also don't run, you don't want them to score another run. And fly ball to left field by number seven, Wilson. That will bring in his first run. And the second run will cross the plate as they keep Wilson at first base. But a two RBI single to left field for number seven, Wilson. That makes it six to zero for the Mets. Good job there by Wilson. Yeah, great job being aggressive on that first pitch. Yep, have a good night. And Wilson saw the wild pitch, heads to second base. So now that he's on second base, it wasn't so bad that they held him back the uh, during his at bat. So still two outs. Mets having a rally with two outs as they put in two runs. And number 11, Lawson, is up to bat. Lawson was in the middle of the four batter walk during the second inning. So looking for a strike here to drive a teammate in from second base. And he has a pop fly to first base, but they step on first base to get him out. So that's the third out of the inning. Great job by the Mariners. Good job by Lane Shank throwing strikes. And the Mariners will head to the dugout, grab their bats, and we will head to the top of the fourth. Welcome back to Youth League Baseball, top of the fourth inning. Brady Morgan has 
come to the mound for the Mets in place of Drew Bowers, who ends up at first base. Up to bat for the Mariners is number 11, Trevor Wally. This is his first at bat of the game. Correction from last inning, the score is five to zero in favor of the Mets, not six to zero. Counts one and one to Trevor Wally. Make that one and two, and there are no outs. And high pitch. Just misses the batter. The umpire does not signal for him to go to first base. But counts even at two. Just kidding. They've decided that the ball did hit the batter. So Trevor Wally will make it to first base on a hit by pitch, bringing up number eight, DJ Basham. And good hard foul ball but not straight enough to make it in between the lines. Basham will head back to the plate. And DJ Basham rounds out the end of the lineup for the Mariners. On deck is leadoff batter Carson Pollock. Good swing there by DJ. <clears throat> we'll have to protect here with two strikes. 0-2, oh Brady Morgan on the mound has a lot of Power, having no balls and two strikes. And good pitch, called low. And called strike on the batter. That makes one out. Bringing up leadoff batter number four, Carson Pollock for the Mariners. Trevor Wally still on first base. And Carson Pollock watches the first ball go by. And ground ball to the pitcher. Bobbles and doesn't make the throw in time. Carson Pollock reaches on the ground ball to the pitcher, pushing Trevor Wally to second base. There is one out. Number two, J.R. McLaughlin is up to bat. He had a hit to left field his first at bat. And good swing, but a miss. Runners in scoring position for the Mariners for only the second time this game. And wild pitch, runners will advance, uh -oh. but late. And there will be no tag at first base as Carson Ooh. Pollock slides around the first baseman. Real close there. That was very close. If it weren't for the angle I was sitting at, I would maybe question that. Oh yeah. I could see that being questioned from another angle. So one out, runners on first and second. J.R. McLaughlin up to bat, count is one and one. And high pitch, foul ball. Now he has two strikes on him. And like we said in the first inning, JR had a good hit to left field. Wondering if Brady Morgan remembers this and trying to pitch carefully as he's got runners in scoring position. Mariners not on the board yet, but looking to score with only one out. Pop fly ends up foul for JR as he's got a good battle going here up at the plate. It's a good job protecting the play here. You can't be too selective with these pitches with two strikes, so for Absol him to foul them off, it's a good good job. Absolutely. And runners advance on a wild pitch, and but a little bit too late. Great arm by the catcher behind the plate to get the runner going to third base. That's DJ Basham, who heads back to the dugout. But Carson Pollock follows behind closely and ends up on second base. So 
Mariners do have two outs. JR up to bat. Still a chance to score a run. And called strike three on the pitch. That ends the inning. We head to the bottom of the fourth inning. Score is five to zero in favor of the Mets. We'll be back. Welcome back to Youth League Baseball on RTC TV. We are at the bottom of the fourth inning where Mets are up to bat with number 13, Kimball at the plate. Mariners made a pitching change at the beginning of this inning with Carson Pollock starting off the inning. Score is five to zero and Mariners, or excuse me, Mets have the lead. And good pitch by Carson Pollock. His first inning of the game here. Third pitcher for the Mariners. Yeah. And good swing by Kimball. He walked his first at bat of the game. But that will be the first out for the Mariners as Kimball strikes out, bringing A.J. Lau up to bat. Can't ask for a better start from your first batter as a pitcher. Exactly. Getting a strikeout on your first first outing there. I think it's always easier to pitch more aggressively when you have no batters on base and so take mm -hmm. advantage of that and start start off strong. And good swing by AJ Lau. Swing and a miss. Counts even at one with one out. Bottom of the fourth inning here. Five to zero. Mets in the lead. And good pitch by Carson Pollock. Looks like he's bringing some heat here in this game. Gets ahead in the count again here. He knows ahead in the count as a pitcher means you have the power. Count even up at two <coughs> on the pass ball. One more, bud. One more. Go. And called strike three. That's the second out. Carson Pollock doing a great job here for the Mariners. And number four, Rayburn comes up to bat for the Mets. Back to back strikeouts for Carson Pollock, keeping his team alive. And number four, Rayburn up to bat. He walked his first at bat. And called strike once again. Carson Pollock evens the count at one. Two outs. Not much action here in the field for the Mariners, but Carson Pollock doing a great job. Well, I think this is a good sign for the Mets. You see Pollock throwing a lot of strikes here, so that'll let them know that they can start being more aggressive at the plate right. maybe the next time around. Absolutely. Rayburn up to bat, Young on deck for the Mets. And called strike two on the batter, brings the count full with two outs, nobody on base. Five to zero, Mets in the lead. And strike three, three up, three down for Carson Pollock as he strikes out the side for the Mariners. They will head to the dugout and grab their bats. We will head to the top of the fifth right after this. Welcome back to Youth League Baseball on RTC TV. This is the top of the fifth inning between the Mariners and the Mets. Brady Morgan still on the mound for his second inning for the Mets. And Bryce Bacher up to bat for the Mariners. Score is 5-0. to zero. Mets in the lead. Mariners looking to get their first run as Bacher hits a ground ball to the third baseman. Called foul ball. He will head back to the plate. Good play by the third baseman as he comes up for the backhand for the Mets. And good swing, staying aggressive, knowing that he's all over Brady Morgan as he hits that good foul ball the previous swing. 
swing and a miss by Bryce Bocker. That will be out number one and bringing Enrique Navarro up to bat for the Mariners. Good job by all the pitchers here tonight. I think we've seen quite a few relievers and all doing a pretty good job throwing strikes here late into the game. Yep, very impressive. For being minor league, nine and 10 year olds, I think we're watching some pretty good baseball tonight. Oh yeah. Accuracy is a difficult thing to teach at this age, so it's nice to see them throwing it right down the middle right. on a lot of these. Makes it more fun. They can put the ball in play and have a good game. Yep. And counts one and two on the batter, Enrique Navarro, one out. Mariners looking to push, push their first run across the plate. And pop fly behind second base, drops. Probably a little tough to see here with the dark skies and the lights, but the overthrow to the pitcher will put Enrique Navarro at second base. So Mets getting a little shaken up there with that first hit. But one out of the inning bringing Tristan Reagan up to bat. He has the ability to have an RBI here and put the Mariners on the board. And pulls back thinking it's a ball but called for a first strike. Good pitch by Brady Morgan. Hoping to get his team calmed down after that double. And strike two on the batter. Enrique Navarro at second base. One out. Yeah, and a foul ball headed straight our way. Good line drive, but just foul. That came off the bat pretty hard there. If he can straighten that out, I think he may be able to drive Enrique in if he gets to a good spot. I think. Good pitch by Brady Morgan. That's the second strikeout for the second out of the inning. Bringing number five, Garrett Armstrong up to bat. Big at bat for the Mariners here as they have not scored yet this game and not had many runners on second base. So a big RBI here would be huge. Brady Morgan doing a good job just pitching strikes here. And pop fly behind the plate. Ooh. It's a called foul ball. Ooh, I don't know about that one. Wondered if the catcher was going to let it go, but he actually popped right into his hand. So that was a good job. I think Drew Bowers behind the plate after he finished up his pitching. But that's a called foul ball. So Garrett Armstrong will head back to the plate with an 0 and 2 count. Two outs, a lot riding on this at bat with a runner in scoring position. And ball low and away. Another good eye. Evens up the count pretty quickly. Sometimes that's hard when you're down 0-2. You don't see the light at the end of the tunnel, but good job being patient by the batter, Garrett Armstrong. It's a good job by the pitcher uh, hitting that outside corner, trying to get, a, get him to swing. He does that time. And he does. That's the third strikeout for the third out of the inning. The Mets will head to the dugout, look to lengthen their lead as it's the bottom of the fifth inning, 5-0 to zero, Mets. Welcome back to Youth League Baseball. Bottom of the fifth inning between the Mariners and the Mets. Mets still in the lead by a score of five to zero. Number nine, Young, is the batter for the Mets. On deck is Brady Morgan. Still on the mound for the Mariners. Had a great inning last inning. Striking out the side is Carson Pollock. Working fast, throwing strikes, and keeping the Mariners alive. And swing and a miss for Young. The batter evens the count at one. No runners and no outs. Chicken. 
and ball out as the Manners are still in high spirits singing their chicken waffle chant. Yeah, I was going to mention that. <laughs> they are trying to distract the batter, but maybe just distracting me instead. Yeah, they got both of us. <laughs> I can't say I've heard chicken waffle. I haven't. That must have been a new one. I must be getting too old. I don't remember those yeah. chants. I've seen some crazy ones, though, I'll tell you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> We uh, don't chant chicken waffle in college, but I may suggest <laughs> that to my sister to bring that to Indiana State when she goes. I can assure you that that would throw some collegiate athletes <laughs> off a little bit. I think I would want to be there filming when that happens. <laughs> and good battle by Young the batter. Full count, worked it from a 0-2 count up to a full count here. And swing and a miss, Carson Pollock wins this battle as he strikes out the first out of the fifth inning. This brings up Brady Morgan, leadoff batter, up to bat. He has done a pretty good job on the mound as well this game. And good swing by Brady Morgan, just a little bit under it, but if he connected with that, man, that was going far. You know, something real common at this age, and I used to do it myself, is they pull that head. Yep, swinging for the fences, but they forget to watch the ball. Yep. So two and one count, one out, Brady Morgan up to bat and called for a second strike here. But Mets have a pretty good cushion with a five run lead here in the bottom of the fifth inning. In minor league baseball here, they play to six innings. So the Mets have this chance to bat, and if the Mariners can't score five or six runs in the next inning, that will be the game. And big hack by Brady Morgan, strikeout for the second out of the inning. Carson Pollock strike, has struck out all of his batters up to this point. So Carson Pollock doing a good job for the Mariners, but bringing number 12, Brady Minix, up to bat. And Tomahawk to the third baseman, tips off his glove and doesn't make the play in time. Minix sees the ball, is away, heads to second uh -oh. base, and that ball's and thrown over. Uh, and he's going he's gonna to get all the way home. He will get an in-the-park home run, a couple too many bobbled balls there by the Mariners, and the Mets get an in-the-park home run from Brady Minix. Sometimes you wonder if they should go back to the throw it to the pitcher method like they do in the Pony League and eliminate a few of those overthrows. This brings number three hitter Drew Bowers up to bat for the Mets. Two outs, no runners on base, but lefty Bowers has some speed here and curious to see who wins this battle between him and Pollock. And good hard hit, pop fly drops behind the second baseman and Drew Bowers rounds first base and decides to stay on the throw back to the pitcher. Smart base running by Drew knowing that there were a few overthrows the batter before to try and get one when at his at bat. This brings number 10 cleanup batter Haynes to the plate for the Mets. Good pitch by Carson Pollock. It's always good to come back with a strike after you get a hit off of you. 
You can see Drew waiting for that pass ball. He is ready to jump on second base here. Absolutely. And second called strike, Carson Pollock knowing he's got two outs. Speed on first base. He wants to get this third out and grab his bat. And just like that, strike three. Carson Pollock, three outs by himself with the strikeouts as the Mariners head to the dugout. Mets will put on their gloves and try to defend their 6-0 lead. Welcome back to Youth League Baseball. Mariners versus Mets here in the top of the sixth inning. Mets in the lead by six runs. Mariners still yet to get on the board. Up to bat for the Mariners is number nine, Aiden Harrington. And we have a little shoe tying situation here before we get this inning started. So the Mariners here need to score six runs to tie the game in order to have a final at bat. If Brady Morgan, the pitcher for the Mets, can shut them out this inning, the game will be over. And Aiden Harrington grounding out to third base. His first at bat takes a big swing and a miss. Two strikes on the batter. And good eye by the batter, evening up the count. And swing and a miss for strike three. Aiden Harrington heads to the dugout as twin brother Brayden Harrington comes up to the plate. That's one out for the Mariners and Mets are two outs away from a victory. And good dodge there by Brayden Harrington as the ball heads toward his face. They're very close there. In softball, we wear face masks, but not the case in baseball. Nice Good play. fly ball right to the right fielder. He did not move. He, he just pulled a sand line right there. That's exactly what happened. Really, really good hit by Braden Harrington, but probably could not have placed it more perfectly in the right fielder's glove if he would have set it there himself. So that makes the second out for the Mets. And there's a conversation happening on the mound between pitching coach or coach in general, Phil Bowers and pitcher Brady Morgan. Looks like we're gonna have a pitching change and bring in the right fielder. I'd say after a catch like that, put him on the mound. Yep. So Brady Morgan heads to right field and number six, AJ Lau, who made that great catch, will head to the mound. So while A.J. Lau is warming up and taking a quick break, so will we. We'll be back with the top of the sixth inning right after this. And we're back with Youth League Baseball on RTC TV. The right fielder has come in for a pitching change. A.J. Lau made a great catch in right field, now pitching for the Mets, who are up 6-0 to zero in the top of the sixth inning. And Christian Kimberling, excuse me, yes, Christian Kimberling up to bat for the Mariners. Two outs. And Mariners have a 6-0 lead, excuse me, Mets have a 6-0 lead, and one more out gives them the victory. Minor League Baseball only plays to six innings. So A.J. Lau on the mound for the Mets, pitching to Christian Kimberling of the Mariners. And he draws a walk and will head to first base after he tosses his bat back to the <laughs> dugout. A little bat confusion there. And 
Kimberlings on first base, bringing up Lane Shank to the plate. Two zero on the batter, but still two outs for the Mets. Looking to complete this game with one more out. Lane Shank up to bat for the Mariners. And a high pitch will send the batter to first base. Lane Shank has a walk pushing teammate Christian Kimberling to second base. So big opportunity here for Trevor Wally as he was hit by a pitch his first at bat. Has a runner in scoring position to keep this game alive. And great swing and also great pitch by A.J. Lau. Also a force out of any bag here for the Mets. So whatever play is easiest for them, they can make. And high fly ball to the center fielder over his head. That brings two runners across the plate as Wally plops on second base, but two RBIs with a great hit for Trevor Wally. So bringing some life to the Mariners with a big hit there with two outs by Trevor Wally. And now up to bat is DJ Basham for the Mariners. Mets still have a good four run lead cushion, but wanting to get this out in a hurry. And called strike on Basham, evens the count at one. And big swing. Good pitch by DJ Lau. So one and two's the count. Two outs on the batter. DJ Basham up to bat. Great job there by DJ protecting the plate. Absolutely, he swung and missed on the previous pitch that was low and out, but just found a way to get a bat on it that last pitch. So Trevor Wally still at second base after a monstrous hit to bring in two runs. And good swing, but out there for the Mariners as the Mets will win the game by a score of six to two. This has been Youth League Baseball on RTC TV. Thanks for watching.